I'm Lisa Evers, and this is Street Soldiers. Fox 5 and Hot 97 present Street Soldiers with Lisa Evers. They're raking in tens of thousands of dollars streaming music, and some of the songs are even hitting the charts. The only problem is they're fakes, stolen from the real artists, and no one seems able to stop them. To have someone leak your work, to have someone steal your work and, and release it, it might not be songs you want the world to hear it. Amadeus has made dozens of hits with the biggest names in the music business, from J-Lo to Chris Brown. He was stunned by a Pitchfork investigation that found music by Beyonce and SZA, mostly unreleased songs and demos, popped up on Spotify and Apple Music, even though neither artist had anything to do with the releases. These are major artists, you know, so... I think it should be a, a, a situation where once something is uploaded, I think someone from the, from the site should reach out to the labels to just verify that, you know, you did approve of this song being released. A leak of a Playboy Cardi and Young Nudie song renamed Kid Cardi actually made it onto Spotify's Viral 50 chart. Pitchfork's Noah so, like, Yu investigated. Is, you know, like, it's no secret that, you know, um, distribution companies are, are kind of the only way to get your music on streaming services. Um, but what was kind of unclear to us was how all of these different companies vet the content that they are being given by artists. There's no foolproof way to know how often this happens. One reason is a tremendous volume of songs. Spotify estimates about 40,000 tracks a day are uploaded to the platform, the largest music streaming service in the world. There are, um, you know, algorithms in place and like databases against which Spotify can cross-reference music that they are being given, but because not all of this music has been released and therefore does not exist in some database, uh, much of it can just fly under the radar. The motive may be love of the music, but there's also money to be made, tens of thousands of dollars. We got in touch with an individual who claimed to us that they had made over $60,000. Having the music copyrighted is not enough, says trial attorney Kelly Hyman. The music is protected. However, what the problem is, is people are uploading it, getting the royalties, and it's really hard to find out who these people are that are uploading the music for people to bring lawsuits against them. We reached out to Spotify but haven't heard back. Now, they did tell Pitchfork that they're continually refining their methods in order to weed out fakes. Let's find out what our panel has to say. Joining me is Amadeus. He's a multi-platinum music producer. He's worked with some of the biggest names in the business, including J-Lo, Chris Brown, and 50 Cent. He's also Trey Song's music director. Amadeus, great to have you with us. Thank you for having me back. Thank you so much. Also joining us is Cherie Smith. She's the assistant managing editor for Laptop Magazine and Tom's Guide and a digital technology expert. Cherie, great to have you with us. Thank you for having me, Lisa. Thank you so much. Also joining us is Bambi H2O. He's a Def Jam recording artist. He's a multi-genre musician and performer. His latest single, his first song that's going to be coming out on Def Jam is called what do you say? Bambi, great to have you with us. Thanks for having me, Lisa. How are you? I'm doing fine. And congratulations um, on signing with Absolutely. Def Jam. That's huge. Thank you. It's crazy. It, it's wonderful. And first time that anyone's hearing about it officially mm -hmm. on the air right this now. This is the first announcement right here. Here we Live go. and direct. <laughs> definitely, definitely. So let me start with you about this. In terms of, as an artist, how important is it to you to own what you create? Because you just you work not just in hip hop, your pop, you do a lot of different types of genres as well. Well, when it comes to owning music, you sort of have to if you really want to take it to the next level. In order to put it on Spotify and Apple Music and not deal with any legal repercussions, you need to own everything. That way you can make all the money that you would like to make off your music, that way you can support your lifestyle, because a lot of these people live like expensive lifestyles, you know, so in order to keep that up, you have to have all the legal stuff, like, set up. So it's really important to own everything. You don't want to play around or screw anybody over, because you'll ruin relationships within the industry. Right, and then also your reputation, reputation as mm -hmm. well. Shuri, why are we hearing more about this now? Because we hear all the time about, you know, websites being hacked into. Most of the time we hear about financial records and credit cards and that type of thing. Uh, that information being hacked into, but it's just we're kind of now just starting to hear about this, these, this fake music and these kinds of songs. Why do you think that's happening? Money. 
Mm -hmm. <laughs> when, right. when money isn't going into the pockets of the people it's supposed to go into, that's when you're going to hear about it. Also, a couple of uh, mainstream music publications have been caught with their pants down because who's not going to report on, hey, Cardi B just dropped a surprise album, or like, like, and then when you find out you're, it's a fake, now they're exposed too. So it's just becoming a multi-tier problem on so many fronts. Amadeus, as a as a music creator and working working with the artist. Do you feel there's enough protections? Not really. You know, um, I've been doing this for over 18 years, and I was doing it when there wasn't any laptops, any internet, so everything was hand-to-hand. -hand. So if you was to present any music to any artist or anybody that you wanted to work with, I remember giving you a, a, a cassette tape. I remember giving you a CD. You know, so now with, with sending it through the internet and via email, it's, it's all kind of ways for things to be hacked. Uh, that's why my email address is so long. When I get my, my email address out, it's like, that's really long, and it's, that's kind of to protect it from being hacked. And I've never been hacked. Uh, and um, so I'm <laughs> what grateful. What was that email address? Again? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> dot 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 dot. No hack dot, at Gmail. Um, so gotcha. yeah, it's, it's just different. It's hard to really protect yourself out here. Uh, so there's things that have been created uh, by producers, by engineers, to protect your music. Where it's like, I'll send you a link. I'll give you a password to that link, and it's kind of documentation of like a trail of I sent it to you. Something happens to this song. I know I sent it to you, and it happened through you. You know, but what about the actual creation process? Because, because some of these songs too were unreleased songs, right. for, by artists. How do, how does that happen? Well, you have sometimes where most artists, if you if you're smart, you would you would find an engineer that you work well with, and that'll be the only engineer that you work with. Not a not a fan, not someone that you meet at a random studio that's just happy to be there. That's saying, oh hey, I recorded this song with with Bambi last night. And uh, I wonder how much I can get if I can leak it or if I, if I pass it to my friend in here. You know, and sometimes it's malice and sometimes it's not. Sometimes it's just excitement of working with that artist. And you're saying, hey, I mixed this song for Bambi. You know, let me let my boy hear it. And next thing you know, he's playing it at Subways. And then someone else hears it. And, and then you have a song leaked and it happened by accident. So you just have to be really cautious of who you work with, how you work with them, and really protect your music as, as much as possible. what music you give up. Should we, you're a journalist as well as a digital expert. What is it about the, where is the technology in terms of this music streaming? Because Spotify says they upload about 40,000 tracks each day, which s s just sounds so overwhelming to me. Well, there's so many ways that it can happen. Like um, Amadeus said, someone can leak it, and people are actually just making fake songs and just saying, and like, oh, well, let me just spell the name a little different than the artist and like pull a fast one over and then you're listening to like you think you're listening to Beyonce you're listening to bluegrass and you're like what the hell like Beyonce has it going country it's just that this is like this is new bootleg this is digital bootleg but like before when I was coming up you get a tape like oh you got you got that tape and now now you, right now they're doing it with mp3s and streams yes. of that nature like it's very easy uh, if you send something through an email for it to get hacked, like you need to uh, to uh, factor authentication, you need to encrypt your tracks. Like as the technology grows, uh, best believe that there's a hacker that has already figured out how to bypass those standards. So you constantly have to be on your game if this is your livelihood. Like you have to really look at like. I eat off of this, so people are trying to eat off of me, and you've got, like, the way that you want to breathe is the way you want to protect your livelihood. And, and, protect, and protect the music like that, too. Bambi, but there's also, too, as, as a creative person, as a performer, too, you want people to hear it. You want to get feedback as well. So mm -hmm. where do you draw that line between, you know, getting the feedback that you need creatively and just as a, as a performer and then, you know, protecting your rights? Yeah, see, it's to me, it's more about having a you need to have people that you trust around, around you. you. Right. And e even even when you have people that you trust, s sending out your songs can always be a funny game because people get excited. Like, they want to send it out. Like, oh, I got this unreleased Bambi. La, 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 So, for me, drawing the line is just like, I'd prefer to play somebody the music in person before I'm sending you the file. Unless you're, like, a trusted person. Like, Amadea said, like an engineer that I work with every single day, of course you can have the song because I mean you helped make it and I know you're not going to send it off to any random people. Right. But when you start sending it to like friends, stuff like that, I've had it happen. It just keeps moving. It They'll just gets it out from to one person no to another person. And you have no, contr no control over it. Coming up, how easy is it to create a fake song? We'll be right back.
not only do you have to probably sue this person, you have to find this person. And with the internet age, anonymity is the greatest superpower. Bambi, talk to me about just the flood of music. It's like you came up at a time where, and you're coming up at a time where there's so much competition, where there's so much out there, mm -hmm. where it's hard to even say, okay, this is totally new because people have heard so much before. How do you deal with that as an artist? Well, you know what it is? I feel like it's just the effort and the time put into the music. Because a lot of people, at least nowadays, they don't really you can tell they don't put a lot of effort into their music like they're doing it just for fun which is totally fine because I think music is about like having fun and okay. feeling good not all music needs to be like deep and meaningful but I put effort into my stuff like I'll spend like weeks working on one song just to get it perfect you know what I mean and incorporating different sounds different genres just separates me from a lot of other artists I feel like but what about the ease of making music like when you when you're when you're making music tell us what that process is like now for you oh it's 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 crazy because before the whole reason why I even got up to New York and my manager found me was because I was recording music on my iPhone and I it was recording quality music wow. because it's not even people don't even really care about the quality of the song nowadays if you have a good like idea if you're creative people will sense that so I started doing stuff on my phone for free because anybody can make music on your phone now it's right. cheap you cost no money and but now we have a home studio with like big setup like nice speakers great mic so it's just day and night you know but either way you can get to the next step if you just have that creative mindset but then in terms in terms of the accessibility too it's like everyone you know you can you can get a song instantly on your phone you don't have to wait you don't have to you know that that type of thing what do you guys think impact that has on people's ability to be able to copy stuff i mean i think it has a big effect on it because if you get someone that is a very good mimic you could get someone that sounds like uh her or mm -hmm. lizzo or something like that and say oh well check out this new lizzo track uh just change tweak the spelling a little bit put it on spotify and Sp it'll t because spotify is being inundated with songs every single day 40,000 um or more like it's going to take them a couple of days to realize oh that's not real and by then it started climbing up the charts yep. right somebody already like the, got like paid the playboy cardi exactly Cardi. and then on top of that like while it's climbing up the charts artists get paid on spotify on apple music on south uh about uh, a thousandth of, of of a cent which doesn't seem like much but once you get a million streams let's say it let's say it's four, four uh thousands right that's forty thousand dollars wow right there right out right of the there gate. Well, but, out. but what and what about two uh, i mean it's like the popularity of the music because there was a fake beyonce and it, it they shut it down pretty fast like you said because journalists no, noticed that people were like wait a minute this isn't a surprise this is this is a total fake but it had already been downloaded mm -hmm. so many times even though it got shut down within a very short space of time. I'm going to give you a quick story. So last week, uh, Young and May released her album, Her Story. Uh, me and my team produced eight songs on the album. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Um, so it's uploaded to Spotify, right? Now, shout out to her team, Drew Ha, Noah. Sent them the credits, uh, the writer's credits, the producer's credits and everything. Uh, they delivered the credits to Spotify. Go on Spotify. Everybody's excited. Credits are incorrect. And then, now this came directly from me, directly to the Young Amaze label, and, and I, I saw the trail, and they sent it directly to Spotify. Now, some, somewhere, somebody at Spotify, you know, I don't know who it was, we don't know, but the credits is incorrect. So, as easy as a mistake as, like that to happen with a major artist that just released their album with everything handed in properly, right. it just goes to show you how simple and how easy it is for something to go wrong, as Sheree said. Somebody can change a name, somebody can change the spelling of something, and it's up. And it's up, and it can't be changed immediately. It takes some time because I'm sure there's a process of for it to be corrected. So as simple as like something like that happening for someone major and a, and a major artist in a real song and a real album with real credits, right. I'm sure it's even easier to for do that. For somebody up and coming, absolutely, or new, or new where they, absolutely. they take it. What do you think about that? Should we just the uh, you know, like the there's, like the technology. There's so much red tape with it. Like the accessibility is great, but once the mistake is out there, or once the troll is out there, like it's hard putting the genie back in the bottle. Yes. Just to, for an artist who's who, let's say Bambi realizes, hey, someone just bootlegged all my stuff. They put out this fake right. this fake album. It's an right. old album in my name. 
Spotify has a, a form that you fill out to say infringement, but it also says be sure you have a lawyer because, yeah. you ha like, not only do you have to probably sue this person, you have to find this person. And with the Internet age, anonymity is the greatest superpower. At, uh, that's, that's why you have people with Twitter fingers because, you know, you think you're behind a keyboard. No one's ever going to find me. You have swatting and all these other issues because there's this cloak of anonymity. So add into that... Uh, IPs and just bouncing them off of towers, you're in for a fight. It's a scary feeling to know that those are, that's what's happening behind the scenes and behind closed doors. The way music is being created. I want to bring Michael Medium in here real quick, our, our DJ Michael Medium and also our, our technical audio expert here for Street Soldiers. Can you just share what you were telling me during the break? Yeah, so a lot of music that's coming out nowadays are specifically geared toward um, streaming. So, for example, like um, Amadeus can attest to this, but music back in the, and you too, music back in the day was about maybe like 8 minutes, 12 minutes right. long. Mm -hmm. But now since streaming, like you were saying, Sherry, that um, you know, it takes 30 seconds for it to count on uh, like a Spotify, Spotify or something like that. Music now is like a minute long, a mm -hmm. minute and a half long, and that's just to get the stream numbers up. Right. I, I don't know if you guys want to comment oh, on that. Oh, yeah. That's I very do true. Come, what, about, what about that? Like some of the songs we're seeing, Old Town Road, Old Town how Road. short, and these songs oh, get yeah. shorter People and shorter. Oh, yeah. do that on purpose. Yeah. Sherry, what about that? I mean, funnily enough. Spotify and a couple of other uh, publishers are doing something of that nature. So uh, it's like there's a Pitchfork article out that I would really to recommend people read. Right, that we um, interview the writer for, yeah. Um, Spotify has the mood sections. And so like if you're feel like in your mood for a party or you want in the mood for some R&B, like a lot of those fake artists live there. And, uh, and it's been tracked to say that Spotify might be employing some of those folks. And it's it, and that's more mu like when you have those bootleg songs, uh, you don't have to pay them as much because they're not a major artist. So if they, it behooves Spotify for them to make it up to charge because they're not paying out as much in royalties. Amadeus, are you concerned about that from a creative standpoint? Yeah, she just you're known as a producer because <laughs> you're known as a producer that really co you really co like to collaborate with the right. artists that you work right. with. Right, it's a lot, man, and 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 each and every day you learn something new, and it's it's scary. It's, it's a scary feeling to know that those are, that's what's happening behind the scenes and behind closed doors. So, you know, it's very important, and I'm glad you have this show to really do your best to protect yourself, not just be in the studio, not just create and want to make music and be on stage, but to be behind the scenes and, and look at the paperwork and, and look at these, these sites that you're uploading your music to, Google your name to see what's up there, or misspell your name on purpose to see if anything comes up, put the, the correct spelling of your song to see what comes up other than your songs, and just kind of keep a track to the best of your ability, if not you, your management or your team, to just overlook your records and overlook your songs. You have to, these are your babies, you know what I'm saying? It's like you birthing your babies, you just can't birth your baby and the baby is here and you and just, just, leave, it out just there. leave it out there you got to protect her him or her you got to nurture you got to feed it you got to feed it you got to feed her or him <laughs> you know you got to protect the babies we put a lot of work into our craft obviously like every artist producer anybody you put a lot of work into it so of course you don't want your stuff to get jacked like on a very basic level but at the same time i've seen a lot of people like have clickbait titles like say oh this is a new nav song and it's actually some random dude you know what i'm saying <laughs> but listen that oh, works yep. for some people like i'm telling you because people in the comments would be like yo who is this like because mm -hmm. some people are good at like actually finding out who the real artist is <laughs> Bambi, we want to thank you. Could we ask you to take your glasses off and say hello oh, to New York yeah. since this is your yeah. first official? All right. Uh, Peace, King. <laughs> thank you guys for having me up here, though. Congratulations. Thank and you, people can uh, look for the new single, What Do You Say? What You Say, y'all. On SoundCloud, go check it out. It's going to be on Spotify soon. Run it up. Run it up. Run it up. Amadeus, thank you so much for being thank with you. us. Thanks we appreciate so much, it. Sharice Smith, great to have you as always. Bambi H2O. Awesome to have you with us, and uh, special day, special moment, first TV appearance, first Hot 97 radio appearance, yes. and uh, first time you're announcing...
that you're signed to Def Jam. So I Amazing. think that's like triple luck. So. Yeah, it's crazy. And I appreciate you, Lisa, and Hot 97 for allowing me to come up here and have this conversation. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. And thank you for joining us. Remember, use your mind. It's your best weapon. I hope it's your only weapon. I'm Lisa Evers. Let's push for peace. <laughs> 